All right, guys, I'm going to go check the backyard and make sure this lady has uh, her chickens put up. Yeah, she has chickens. So I'm going to walk back here and make sure that they're put away so I don't get harmed by these chemicals. <sighs> Let's see. Well, what do we have here? I need to get that stuff up. Looks like chickens are put away, but I can't tell. I have to get that stuff up for them. Chickens are not up. Hmm. Well, where are they? I don't see the chickens back here. Hmm. Well, I might call her just to verify since it looks like the chickens are roaming around somewhere. But stay tuned. Alright, guys, so get ready to mix some chemicals up and uh, spray this lady's backyard. So, uh, this is drive. XLR8 mix this one and a half ounces per gallon of water. My spray tank is four gallons. Now this right here, you just want to do like a splash. You're supposed to use a third, um, a third of an ounce per gallon of water. Um, so generally, I, I use an ounce of that with an ounce and a half of this. And now this is for crabgrass. This is an, only a crabgrass killer. It doesn't kill any other weeds, really. Uh, this is triple at SF. That's a selective herbicide. Now this is a selective herbicide as well. It kills more of your broadleaf weeds and stuff like that. Um, generally I use this in the cooler months and I generally use T-Zone once it gets hotter. But uh, I ran out of T-Zone. So um, I don't do a whole lot of spraying. Uh, I just spray the properties that I take care of and uh, it's generally it. But uh, anyways, I'm going to mix these chemicals up and then I'll show you how to mix it into the sprayer. And oh, on the triplet, you want to use 1.5 ounces per gallon as well. Um, generally, I use the surfactant with triplet, but today I'm not using the surfactant because I'm using the drive. And I typically don't like to use surfactant when I use drive. Some people do, but uh, not me. Just think it's an added expense. Anyways get these mixed up for you and then I'll show you how to pour it in the sprayer and show you how I mix the sprayer when I do it. Alright guys, so I got our chemical mixed up. We're getting ready to fill the sprayer up. So uh, generally what I do, because I have a four gallon sprayer, I know some of you guys watching probably have bigger sprayer tanks, like 100 gallon or something along those lines. But uh, generally what I do is I like to mix, put about two gallons of just regular water and uh, Put two, about two gallons of regular water in here and uh, something along those lines. And then I'll mix my chemicals. Just feel like it gets a little bit better. And then you kind of mix it up once you put the rest of the water in there. Um, just my opinion. It's how I was taught to do it. And I just believe it works. Um, on this particular sprayer, it's kind of hard to see. So uh, generally what I have to do is I have to come over here and I'll find the two and I'll look in there and I'll see my finger mark and we're about right on it right now. We're a little above, but that'll be okay. Mixing four gallons today. So pour the chemical in there. And when you pour this chemical in there, you need to make sure you rinse this cup out at least three times. So um, spraying this stuff is not something that I average homeowner should do. Um, you're supposed to be licensed to do this. I had to take a class. It cost me about $400. did it at the Green Growing Show. If uh, any of y'all know or heard about the Green and Growing Show. Um, and then you have to pay $90 to the state. You know, they got to get their money too. Um, 
But anyways, and also another another guideline is you really should be wearing gloves when you're mixing chemicals. I'm not because I'm recording, but if I was not recording, I would have my gloves on, my green nitrate spray gloves on. I'm a little iffy about getting cancer. Some of my family members have had cancer, and uh, not particularly a fan. Um. Anyways, I'm gonna pour this in here, and then I'll mix up the rest of the water. And then we'll get on about our day, and we'll spray and spray and spray. Now look how nasty that looks. It's just nasty color. It's brown, and it is what it is. Some strong stuff. So I'm gonna go home and take a shower after this. Um, but uh, generally, I would have my gloves on, and I wouldn't be so weird about it. But uh, right now, I'm a little weird about it. I don't want to get cancer, and I, I don't want this shit on me. It, uh, this stuff, it, it can do some damage. What triple it does is it makes one side of the stalk grow up taller. And uh, that's how it kills the weed. It, it grows it and makes it contort and stuff. Anyways, guys, I'm going to put my mixing cup up back in my spray box. And then uh, I'm going to walk back here in the backyard. And I'm going to show you all how this Jackco sprayer works. And I guess maybe give you all a little bit of a review on it. I mean, uh... It's not my favorite sprayer. Um, definitely like the Chapins, but a little bit better. Um, just because they work a little bit better and they have the removable battery. They come with two batteries. You can purchase extra batteries when you need. This one, you, you gotta plug it up and charge it. Um, that's the only downfall. Um, but it works pretty good um, overall. This is a little bit more expensive than one of the Chapin sprayers as well. Um, but it has some added features on it. Um, but, you know, it only lasts for about eight hours. And, uh, anyways, let's sit down on our front porch and get these straps on. It's four gallons of water. It's pretty heavy. Um, this Jackco sprayer works very nice for my needs. Um, do not recommend spraying any kind of collated iron in it. Um, it clogs it up almost every time. You can do it about one time and that's about it. That's about all you can get away with. Um, after that, every time you, you do it, you gotta mix in with the collated iron. Not after, but with it, the uh, spray tank mix. It's just because of the little orifice hole in, inside the sprayer is... Uh, so small but anyways I'm gonna cut the sprayer on and I'm gonna flip it around and I'll uh, show you how it works well any reason for some reason guys I was spraying and uh, my video got deleted I don't, I don't know what happened oh I'm in a tree anyways I'm trying to show you how this Jackco sprayer works I'm spraying a lawn right now for crabgrass and uh, she's got some other weeds these weeds really got out of control I like to walk backwards though all the time. Feel a little safer. I don't like to get the chemical on me. I always want to spray when it's not windy, which it's not windy at all right now. You can see this chemical coming out. It comes out of a pretty fine mist. I got my droplet size increased right now. I'm gonna go up here and uh kind of straighten out my line. I hope this triplet works. But anyways, you can probably hear the motor running. It runs pretty good. Oh man, that breeze feels good. It's hot out here today, guys. Man, it's still breezy. You can see the trees moving. 
kind of jinx myself by saying it's not windy. You can see them moving too. And I don't like to spray when it's windy. I must have jinxed myself. Anyways, guys, I'm going to try to finish up this lawn and uh, see how things go. I'll walk, when I get done, I'll walk you up front and show you how, uh, how this chemical works. Because I've kind of already sprayed this lawn in a two-part process. Um, but anyways, now that this is working, I was trying to tell you all about my recommendations on how to use this sprayer and what to do. Um, I don't recommend using any kind of Roundup or anything in here and I do not recommend using collated iron. I think I talked about that just a minute ago. But the Roundup, I definitely, I mean, if you had two Jatco sprayers, this would probably be the better one for the Roundup. If you, if you had a Chapin sprayer, I think that one would be the better one for the selective herbicide, in my opinion. Um, not knocking this sprayer, not saying it's a bad unit. Um, it's just that generally when I spray, I like to mix some kind of iron or some kind of uh, carbon or something in there. Um, just to uh, kind of green up the yard a little bit. And with the sprayer, it, it kind of limits you. you. You can't do that. I, I know you guys with the 100 gallon sprayers and the larger ones, y'all, y'all do do that. Well, most of y'all do that. Um, and fortunately, I, I haven't been able to have the funds to purchase one yet. Um, that's, that's one of my next purchases after an aerator. I'm going to probably get the Turfco aerator unit. Um, with the Yamaha engine that just came out this year. Um, been looking at that for quite some time. I checked it out at the Green Growing Show. It was a really nice unit. Um, but we'll see what my money has allowed me to do this winter. I may have to rent a sprayer, I mean, a, not a sprayer, a uh, aerator again like I did last year. Rent it one. Did all my aerating in two days, um, which wasn't 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 that bad. Um, I mow about 38 lawns a week, and uh, it was difficult. I, w I will say that to get them all done, but uh, not too too difficult. I was able to do it. Um, uh, last year, what I did was I aerated, it and I did I did not seed the same day. Generally, I do like to seed the same day. Um, I didn't get to. Anyways, guys, I'm going to get off of here and I'm going to finish spraying this yard. And uh, those are just my thoughts on this Jackco sprayer and how I think it performs and the limitations that it gives you in having a four gallon backpack sprayer as your main selective herbicide sprayer. Um, not really ideal but it works it does work it's somewhere to start um, to compete with these companies like true green um, you have to compete with them you know um, otherwise they'll take all your profits before you even know it and all you'll be doing is mowing grass and mowing grass is good money don't get me wrong but it's not where the main money is at money's out and taking care of this turf and landscaping and get the plants in the ground and get the money but that being said I'm going to finish this yard and you all guys have a great afternoon I'll talk to you in a little bit peace okay guys I want to add a few things about this sprayer since my first video got deleted so uh one nice thing about this sprayer is that uh has adjustable nozzle on the front of it. Like this right here, this blue t nozzle is adjustable and you can spin it and then change your pressure setting up top. So you can see how it sprays. You got kind of a fine droplet. Um, so you can change it. I'm not gonna change it right now because it's covered in chemical, but uh, you can change it. So like if you were to choose this as your non-selective Roundup or Ranger Pro sprayer, you could get more of a direct stream than I'm spraying right now and uh, 
honestly, that's what this sprayer would be better for. Um, it, it would be much better as a non-selective sprayer than a selective herbicide sprayer. Considering the fact that I said earlier that I like to spray some kind of iron or carbon within my mixtures to help with green ops and to give them a little fertilizer and stuff. Now, uh, a lot of people do that with the bigger spray tanks. Um, this thing has a lot of nice features over the chaffin. Um, I didn't want to knock it earlier because um, it's definitely a nice sprayer. There's definitely some reasons why I chose it over the Chaffin. Um, the Chaffin I just didn't like because I used it for a comp another company and uh, it leaked on me. It would always leak down my legs because uh, one of the employees there had uh, cross-threaded the, uh, the uh, cap and the sill is in the cap. Now, uh, this one the sill is also in the cap, I, I believe. Um, I, I forget if I'm wrong. Uh, it may be in this little mixing cup thing. It's like a aerator, I guess, for the chemical. I don't use it. Um, but I know one thing. This sprayer has never leaked on me, um, which is something I like. Um, but, you know, um, always could leak. I've owned this sprayer for about six months now and I've never had really a problem other than with the collated arm. It makes it impossible to spray the collated arm. Um, which is a bummer really uh, to me. Um, for my yards, I believe. Um, but I'm gonna try this stuff called Miramac or Murchy Mac or something. I believe Justin Timberlake or Bieber, one of them was the creator of it. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I believe that's what I was told when I was uh, purchasing it. I do not have that in my sprayer right now because I've been having so many issues with this sprayer that just just clogging up really that's the only issue i've been having with it but i'm not using it right now because that it it really will piss you off it really will you'll be in the middle of spraying a yard in the middle of trying to make some money and then here you go you gotta stop job's done work's done you gotta go home you gotta sit there and clean it and drain it into a barrel and sit there and do this that and the third just to just to get to where you can spray a damn yard. I mean, it's really, it's, it's not fun. It's, it's really time consuming. And it's, it's really annoying. So I don't know if I'm gonna use any other kind of liquid spray in here. Um, at least not with herbicide. I believe I, I would clean it. I would get your herbicide out first believe I would clean it after that and I, I believe that I would uh then and when I say clean I don't mean dump it out I mean pour maybe two gallons of water in it put your damn pro tank tank solution in there and uh then go to town just spray that out in the street or somewhere or in the driveway maybe somewhere in a in a bed without any plants um because I actually don't recommend spraying it in the street. I probably shouldn't have said that. We are out of chemical. You see how far this sprayer gets us. It gets us about halfway done with this backyard. Shit, there are the chickens. Well. Alright guys, so I'm going to mix this on the table. So I'll show you. Typically don't like to do this. Because I always spill. You know, I like to do it somewhere where no one's gonna be. That way I can clean it up. This is methanated seed oil. Generally, what I do is this stuff always leaks. So, just a little dab, about an ounce, really, is how I, how I do it. Again, so you can see that it's made by Southern AG, not seed oil. Drive XR8. Um, now, this is an ounce and a half per gallon. Mix it four gallons. 
It's only used six ounces. We got an ounce in there, so we're gonna bump it up to seven. That's a little more, but we can't pour anything out. Again, it's to drive. It's a crabgrass killer. It really doesn't kill anything else. Um, really doesn't kill well the goosegrass either. Um, it's really like strictly crabgrass. Um, this is triplet SF. This is broadleaf selective herbicide. It, uh, those broadleaf weeds and all that nonsense that you don't want in your yard. Uh, this is one and a half ounces per gallon as well. Looks like I spilled a little bit. It sucks. It is what it is. Now, guys, we'll take the phone over there and you see how many ounces we got. In there, it's really a nasty chemical. We'll go back over here. I won't mix it. Hopefully, this will be my last spray tank for this lawn. Um, hopefully, these guys. Let's see, pour it in here. Remember, like I said earlier, you want to after you pour it in here, you want to make sure you rinse this cup out three times. So they have no buildup in this cup whatsoever. Now, end my video here. Fill up the sprayer the rest of the way. And uh, talk to you guys later. Real quickly, I'll show you how I put this sprayer on. Generally sit it on some stairs, such as. Um, here's how you cut the sprayer on and off. Right here, if I can get it in the video, you press this button. Here, cut it on. Um, I'm going to cut it off for now. This is how I put the sprayer on now. I don't generally sit down on a stair. I'll take one strap and put it over my shoulder. I generally do this for safety. Um, just because you never know if the sprayer is going to leak. It doesn't matter how safe you think it is or not. Anything man-made can fail. And will fail. So, why don't you stand up. Adjust your shoulders. Then reach over here to the left, push up, cut her on. I pressurized it because I cut it on once. Then we'll go back here and uh, finish spraying this yard. All right, guys.